Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy this video. Well hello everyone, an incredibly windy day outside. Now in this video I'm going to announce the builders of Great Zimbabwe as, drum roll please, because this is very controversial very controversial, the Etruscans. Now, this, is, this, is, this has been so controversial, I've been reading this for several hours and I've, I've come to this conclusion based on several hours of research and there, there, there is no way it is not the Etruscans who built Great Zimbabwe and the Brocks in Scotland and the ring forts in Ireland. They are all one and the same. They are all one and the same builder, the Etruscan Empire, and I can prove it, also known as the Tyrrhenian Empire, and these were the people who traded the Orichalcum into Europe. They can, there is precious little information about the Tyrrhenians, but they seem to have ran a naval empire in the West Mediterranean, and they built these in Scotland. Now, you're gonna say, Charles, this is crazy. I don't believe you. Well, look, it's long been thought that the ruins of Great Zimbabwe, uh, where we have all this, all this amazing stuff, um, was was built by uh, was was were built by an unknown people who went into Africa. Um, uh, it, it was always said that these are built by the. Uh, this was built by either the Phoenicians or the Arabs. In the 1950s, they started. Uh, 1920s, they started saying, "Hmm, the local people must have built it." Uh, uh, the, the Rhodesian government of, um, uh, uh, what was his name, Mr. Smith um, in Rhodesia said the Africans couldn't have built it. Um, obviously they had political motives for saying that. Um, and they said foreigners built it. And uh, so it goes backwards and forwards, doesn't it? But I'm telling you, it's the Etruscans and I'm going to absolutely prove that so much, it's just not, it's just not possible to see it any other way. Now I was asked to, to make a video, well I hope, I was asked to make this video several months back. Uh, a guy called Brett suggested I look at this because there seem to be crescent ruins here. Um, so what we have here, we have a, a big hill fort here and then we have a valley fortress as well. And this is some kind of castle which looks to me like a, a dark age castle you would get in Scotland or Ireland. One of these big fat round things basically. And uh, you know, it's just, it's just so incredible what we see. We see these uh, nice, uh, nice ancient ruins. Um, uh, uh, just, uh, just, 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 uh, just uh, absolutely unbelievable. Um, how do I, how do I zoom out? Um, there we go. And here's the thing, guys. So this is the Zimbabwe ruins. Very interesting. No mortar. Exactly the same actually construction technique without the mortar as the Scottish brocks. Now. I, I was I, I was confused as to how old these were. I always assumed these were built by people to save them from the Vikings, etc. You know, when the Vikings were in attacking a thousand years ago, not so, according to Wikipedia. Um, and this is really interesting. If we look at the origin of these of these things, um, according to Wikipedia, there's precious little information about these, but. But, uh, 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 regarding radiocarbon dates, but they seem to be about 2,000 years old. And one article suggested they, they found a, a radiocarbon date of about 200-300 BC. We're talking antiquity, guys. These brocks must have guarded the sea lanes to the New World to the Orichalcum mines, which possibly were around Lake Superior, Michigan, somewhere in the New World. And it looks like they might have gone to Africa as well. So not only were these Etruscans trying to get into uh, the New, going across to the New World to get the Orichalcum, they were also trying to round the Horn and get to, round the Cape and get uh, I I Africa and into Asia as well. And I believe these round towers, whether they be in Sardinia, whether they be in Scotland, and whether they be in Zimbabwe are all Etruscan structures. They were all, and they're all based on metal. I found out, as, as many people know, the, 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 the ruins of Great Zimbabwe are actually based, based upon, um, they're, they're, they're based upon um, uh, uh, gold mines. The reason they're there is they're there to protect uh, essentially gold mines and that's what these ruins are for and um, they, they're terraced they have terraced hills just like just like uh, just like uh, that um, and uh, there we go there's more Great Zimbabwe 
uh, it's it terraced round structures. This is what Etruscans built, and look at that. Uh, that that that. Now this is uh, one of the smoking guns. It's similar to a Scottish brock, but it's also similar to an Etruscan st structure because we don't have it, hardly any Etruscan buildings. I do think. The Pantheon is based on an Etruscan design, the sort of dome uh, sort of design, a round design. Um, and, and you get this kind of thing. Uh, it was on Lars Porsena's tomb, uh, Etruscan tomb, which was demolished by the Romans. And doesn't that actually look... Damn, there's, based on this representation, that's like that thing I showed you in Sardinia that I said was built by the Giza builders. And you know that well, you just send the steps in Sardinia. That representation, and there are different representations, so this might be useless, but just, just the representation, uh, pyramids on top of pyramids, basically, it's described as. Um, it, it, that is what you actually see, pyramids on top of pyramids. You see that at Zimbabwe. I'm going to prove that. Uh, right now we're gonna we're gonna find um, that's Mycenae, which is similar, but no cigar. Uh, we we actually see the pyramids on top of pyramids on the Zimb. I'm gonna look for the Z Zimbabwe wall, and I'm gonna show it to you right now. And um, let me see now. Um, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Uh, you have these the, the conic the structures the, the the round the round towers on top of this, and this is just so interesting because you also have these. Where do you have them? You have them in the New World as well in the Inca places, and uh, the Irish built round towers since forever, uh, since time immemorial. The Scottish built. So who builds round towers? Uh, back back in the day, a long long time ago, and that all look the same. The Scots, the Irish, who are the same people, the Incas, and the Zimbabwe's. Uh, so, what the hell is going on, people? What is going on? And um, and so, so when I saw the dates of the Scottish Brocks, uh, that's when I realised that something was very wrong. Now, here is an article. I only have the first page. I don't have access to journals anymore. The Chronology of Great Zimbabwe. And if you look up carbon dates of Zimbabwe, they'll tell you Middle Ages. Not so. According to this article, 1991, um, unfortunately, the first radiometric dates uh, 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 from Great Zimbabwe only confused the issue further. Two wooden lintels were found in 1950 in a wall in the Great Enclosure, the large building in the valley below the hill ruin. The lintels only supported the wall over the drain built in its base, and so they were unquestionably associated with its construction. Shortly after their discovery, a piece of lintel one was sent to Libby in Chicago, um, who dated the wood 535 AD. Now that is the time of the great voyages as well, um, away from Ireland and uh, uh, by St. Columba, St. Uh, St. Brendan and all this AD, and they, they dated another lintel to AD 606, AD 444. So they're a lot older than the archaeologists say, for starters. That's just for starters. And it says, these surprisingly earlier dates were either rejected or placed in abeyance by most of the archaeological community, although some people used them as support for the exotic origins of the ruins. And the point of all that is we don't know. We don't know. It's not as clear as they claim. And in, in fact, uh, I'm, I'm going to zoom into this. Guess when the pottery starts in Zimbabwe, AD 100. Uh, it says no walling, but how do they know? Because they also say unknown Bantu speakers. Okay, straight away that's political. How do we know? Uh, we're, not, we're not radiocarbon dating people's vocal cords. So um, what's going on there? So it, it's about 2,000 years old. So in other words, it starts about the same time as the Scottish Brocks. Uh, date two, uh, which is just so interesting. And these are dates. Uh, these are uh, so-called architectural phase. Uh, uh, so architectural phases of the Great Enclosure start in AD 1000, but you've got archaeology before that. Uh, it seems the pottery, AD 100. What's going on? Was it rebuilt in 1000? Uh, possibly in in uh, in uh, in response to to Viking attacks. The Vikings were attacking everywhere in 1000. There was huge turmoil. Uh, who knows what's going on? Uh, with that, I mean, uh, 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 even indirectly, say the Vikings attack someone, it ca creates a butterfly effect. For example, uh, the Germans attacking Rome was due to the fact that Attila was attacking the Germans uh, f further off, you know. Um, and this was a great age of migrations. So I believe, you know, based on this, 
um, that the, there was a, there was a great empire in Africa that the Etruscans had. Maybe it used to be before that it was Solomon's Mines. People have said uh, the the great ruins of Zimbabwe, uh, uh, the ruins of Sheba, and all this. Now I want you to look at this this uh, structure here. This is a uh, Vinca idol, and it's two things in one. It's a bit of a phallus, but it's also a uh, a bird goddess and a female goddess. And in the ruins, of, and this is a Vinca, old Europe. So in other words, ancient world, ancient world uh, artifact. So um, it, then in uh, in Zimbabwe, what we actually had was uh, we had a uh, uh, Zimbabwe bird goddess, uh, which was found. And uh, let's have a look. And it's it's kind of the same thing, basically. It's it's this bird phallus thing with, and it's a bird as well. And there's even a bit Gebekli Tepe here with that thing go, going on there as well. Uh, let's look at another picture. Uh, the, 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 the Zimbabwe bird and crocodile, possibly symboling the male and female attributes of the Shona high god, respectively, etc., uh, etc. Et but these are, tra uh, especially with the, the lizard, the snake, look, he's climbing on world tree, so that uh, that totem pole represents world tree with the bird on top that is a world tree representation that's the snake of eden okay and they're saying these are the local gods of the shona people look guys these are worldwide gods you see the same thing in uh, in in america with the bird on the cactus uh, and, and then you've got the snake crawling around underneath on the mexican flag you, you, you can't say these are the tr these are the gods of a local people these are worldwide gods um and um so, it, so this is a civilization which has its origins in the ancient world. Okay, um, you know it's just so fascinating. And and um, when I looked at uh, build, well, I, I recall buildings in Ireland, for example, Ireland. They're called ring forts. Ring, uh, a, a, a ring fortress is something like um, it's something like that, something like this, something like this. And there's, there's, there's thousands of these, and there's something like this, there's, there's famously one on the edge of a, of a, of a, of a, of a cliff, um, uh, Irish ring fort cliff, if I search for that I'll find it. Uh, it's called uh, it's, it's called Dun, I, uh, Dun, they're called Duns in Ireland. There we go. The crescent-like ruins of Great Zimbabwe exposed in Ireland. So um, I'm going to compare that now to a map uh, of uh, Zimbabwe. So here we go to Zimbabwe. And I told you, see, I told you I was gonna prove all this and, and, I, and, I, and I will, you know. So here we have the Crescent-like uh, ruins. Um, there, you see, there. That looks so much like, uh, like that. That is the closest thing I've seen uh, to Great Zimbabwe so far. Dun Angus, Angus, Dun Angus. Okay, that looks so much like Great Zimbabwe to me. Okay, and who knows how old this fort is. It's just, you know, I'll, I'll see. And We don't know how old this fort is. I'm going to try and see how old it is. Um, it, it's on the edge of a 100 meter cliff, popular tourist attraction, the history. Okay, they say the construction goes back to 1100 BC and around 500 BC triple wall defences were built. So that would be the true age of Great Zimbabwe and that exactly corresponds to the Etruscan Empire because the orichalcum trade uh, was finished in about 500 BC. And, uh, so the Romans had only ever heard of it, they'd never even seen it. The ancient Greeks had seen it. But not the Romans, they weren't old enough. It was all Etruscan, the Etruscan Empire. Guys, I think I've proved my case. Uh, these are Etruscan ruins. These are Etruscan ruins. Scottish Brocks are Etruscan ruins. And they were safeguarding their passage. This was their worldwide empire. Okay? I think I've proven that. You know, I've, I've uh, absolutely proven that. This is Zimbabwe. I've proven who it wasn't. Like, they only thought in, in 2D back in the day. They thought, oh, there's Phoenicians and there's Phoenicians and there's Phoenicians. So if it's not the English, it's the Phoenicians. If it's not the Romans, it's the Phoenicians. If it's not the Egyptians, it's the Phoenicians. Hey, the Phoenicians only took over from the Etruscans. They weren't the Etruscans. It's the Etruscans. And I haven't even damn well showed you the origin of the first round towers, the, the Nuragi, the round tower in Sardinia. Uh, you know, I've just... 
absolutely um, well, smash this out of the park. This is the origin in Sardinia, and uh, this is where you actually see representations. The, the, these are the first towers, and if we look, and, and honestly, 750 between 1900 and 750 BC, and then they spread out as they 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 formed their worldwide empire into Africa, into America, into Scotland, into Ireland, all that stuff there. It's it's the it's the Tyrrhenian Empire, and you have things like this. So you have a a thing on top. Top of the wall, like I showed you in Etruria, uh, or, or, or it's behind the wall. 1600 BC. You see where the medieval castle comes from? It looks like it even looks like the, the Gothic stuff they built in Italy. I guess they copied. Uh, just absolutely incredible, guys. Look at that. You see, uh, similar to Mycenaean stuff as well. Uh, I, I, you know, I, that's my that's my case. That I, I, that that is my case to you. Um, we look at the the Great Zimbabwe. Uh, I was looking for skeletons, couldn't find any, so that means that they're, they've rotted away or they're too old or they've been looted. Uh, these are Nuragi here, Nuragi in, uh, in Zimbabwe. To me that's obvious, that's plainly obvious. It's a beehive-like structure that you get in Ireland as well. I'm gonna, I can even prove that right now. I think I've got a picture somewhere. Um, not in that one. Uh, we'll get rid of that, we'll get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it's somewhere. Uh, it's uh, Ireland Beehive. It's in, a, the beehives are in an enclosure, so there we go. Uh, there's the beehive-like structures in Ireland. Um, there you go on the beach because it's fall, all fallen into the sea. These would have been Etruscan buildings. So exciting. What do you think of that hypothesis? I think it's a new hypothesis and I, I would use that to explain those ruins. Cheers guys. Hey, 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 blokes and dolls. You know what? Uh, now, you've seen my books. I, I've shown on the end of each video about the ancient mysteries and stuff. Um, but if you know me, you also know I'm a self-help person. And I've just uh, been working so hard, you know, because I love to help people out, you know. So I've written this great book, Success is Easier Than You Think, Lessons from Great Achievers. It's actually based on past history figures and, and how to join their ranks. And this is the paperback. It is, it is currently publishing uh, for Amazon. It, 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 that will be out very soon. But you can get the Kindle one. That's already there. You can get the Kindle app on your phone, even on your Mac phone. I mean, how good is that? And in addition, now that, that's, a, that's a considerably long book, you know, it's 224 pages. Uh, in addition, I've got another one called Public Speaking is Easier Than You Think. And this book is also by moi. And this book is just absolutely unbelievable because I have distilled the full essence of everything you need to know about public speaking into a rather short book. This is all you need to know to become a champion public speaker. I was speaking last night at my Toastmasters, which I'll upload to my other channel, and you know, I got, uh, I, I was best speaker. Yeah, I was best speaker. Uh, so, you know, so Chucky knows his stuff, you know, with lots of uh, speaking experience, you know, I used to run a tour business and stuff, and, and I did a lot of speaking, a lot of standing ovations. So, uh, you know, yeah, uh, public speaking is not that hard, guys. It's really not that hard. It's all about your energy. It's all about, you know, getting out there. It's all about being passionate and about putting your best foot forward. And I explain exactly how to do it in here. So it's a lot easier than you think. So check those out. Cheers.